It's a new year and a fresh start for the Lopes as WAC play has begun. Junior forward Alessandro Labor joins the show. And one heartwarming moment is just beginning for one super fan. It's all coming up right now on the Dan Marley Show. Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show, presented by Talking Stick Resort. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of the GCU Lopes, Dan Marley. And coach, you're coming off uh, the conference opener at Bakersfield. Coming into that game, you finished strong in non-conference play, a big win against Eastern Illinois, but a little bit of a break there, trying to get the team back and prepared for conference play. Yeah, we had a little time off, tried to get a schedule to the game there, uh, just uh, couldn't find one. So uh, unfortunately, we had a two-week period where we probably you know didn't play, and then we had a couple of... Uh, flu-like symptoms, so uh, for, for the most part, we had nine guys for the rest of practice, and uh, to be honest with you, I thought we went out to, at Bakersfield, which is one of the better teams in our league, and probably you know one of the toughest places to play. We played really well. I thought, for the most part, we uh, had the game in control, especially in the second half. We got up by 12, um, you know, and then the last 10 minutes uh, had some costly turnovers. We had nine turnovers for the game, and in that last 10 minutes, we had five over turnovers. Uh, couldn't find a way to score, and, and it, and rebounding wise, you know, we were wor really worried about rebounding uh, at half. We were even, uh, and then they out rebounded us by 11 in the second half and, and hurt us on the offensive board. So, very disappointing loss for us. Uh, I thought we had the game in control, but I saw a lot of positives too. I thought our guys came out and played really hard. Yeah, I listened to your post game comments on, on 1580 with Michael Potter and Paul Coro, and you talked about the positives. Obviously, the last you know, 12 minutes of the game, you had that lead and, and saw it evaporates. A learning lesson, obviously, for your team and a, a team that's still growing. Yeah, you know, like I said, we had some costly turnovers and they came down and made three threes in a row, got right back in the game and then down the stretch, uh, fought, um, you know, got to the free throw line, missed a couple uh, front ends of one of ones which really hurt, uh, and then hit the foul. So, you know, ended up losing by seven, but obviously the game was a lot closer, a lot closer than that. And I thought we had the game, uh, in hand for a while and hopefully we can learn from that and, and get better. But I thought uh, for the most part, I was pleased with the way our guys played. Alessandro Laver got into some foul trouble. He got two quick fouls there. He's still kind of, you know, I know you were talking a little bit about, you know, how he needs to defend, how he needs to protect himself. Yeah, you know, it's, it, tough. it's tough because I don't think the fouls that, that he got put on him were, were fouls. I mean, big guys are down there. He's wrestling a guy who's 6'8", 270 pounds, and there's a lot of bodies. Uh, you know, he, he gets a lot of brunt of it on the offensive end. It doesn't seem like he gets uh, the same type of calls. So, yeah, it was tough. He picking up those two fouls, and I thought that was great that we were able, able to hang in there and, uh, you know, 28, 28 the half with Ali only playing about half of that first, uh, first uh, half. So, uh, you know, we just got to find a way to, to get him more shots. It's really hard. I mean, he only shot six times, but every time he catches the ball, he's going to be double teamed. I thought we did a really good job of playing out of that. So our guys got to be prepared to score out of double teams. You know, throughout non-conference play, you, you know, we, there was some uncertainty with your lineup. Now you know your rotation. Is this, at least you know who you have on the court. Does that help you out and how you set your you know, upcoming games? Yeah, it's not a lot of guessing work. We know who's going to play. Uh, it'll be those seven guys. Uh, you know, depending on foul trouble, uh, uh, Bungai may get in for a little bit, but it's pretty much Bryce and Doobie coming off the bench. I thought Bryce mm -hmm. uh, continues to get better. I'm really high on, on him as a freshman. The, the improvement that he's made from day one to now, he's more active on defense. They only gave him one block the other night, but we caught, we caught uh, three on tape. So uh, he's doing a good job down there. He's athletic. His shot's gotten a lot better. So uh, Bryce is doing a good, good job. Doobie's scoring the basketball. Uh, he's got to be, be a little bit more aggressive on the boards on the defensive end. But, yeah, you know who's going to play. Um, you know, Carlos uh, playing pretty well. Javon had a nice second half. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got to continue to work on his shooting because he's, he's going to be a guy that they're going to leave open. You and, and your style of coaching, have you had to adjust it? We're seeing some zone. Yeah, I've had to adjust everything this year. It's, it's been a, a wild year. It really has. So uh, <laughs> without the depth that we've had, we haven't been able to run as much. Um, so uh, zone's been good for us. We keep uh, mix mixing it up, and a lot of that has to do if we get into foul trouble, we'll probably play some more zone. The, uh, this past week before the game, Paul Coro recorded uh, a practice uh, and saw you out on the court with the team. Yeah. 
got quite a few views. I was like, oh, over 200,000 <laughs> views. They, they said you still got it. I mean, you were well, I still got it as long as I don't have to move. We yeah, were working. That's true. We were actually working. That was one of the days we only had nine guys. I think Doobie was out with the flu or something. Somebody's going Isaiah maybe. So uh, I just played offense, and we were working on our zone defense and uh, just out there uh, launching some threes, and I was able to make a few. Uh, Paul had to edit out that some of the comments. Was, uh, I heard they were pretty funny. Uh, you were schooling some of the guys. Yeah, I, I, I talk a little crap sometimes. So <laughs> they probably is not good for, uh, for, for, uh, for Twitter or whatever it was on. <laughs> a long NBA career, of course, and an Olympian as well. And uh, if I could transition awkwardly into the passing of uh, NBA Commissioner uh, David Stern, obviously meant so much to the game. And, and, in, and his inroads from, a, from you know, the uh, dream team and mm -hmm. opening up the game globally, do you think it had an impact in as far as the collegiate ranks, guys like Alessandro Laver coming over from Italy? Or, or? Oh, there's no question. Uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Stern, probably the best commissioner in any uh, organized sports, uh, what he's done for the NBA. I mean, you know, back when he took over, I think uh, the games were on tape delay. Mm -hmm. um, so to be able to, to build the, the brand, the NBA brand, not only uh, here in the States, but globally has been a huge uh, deal and uh, you know everybody should thank him for the money that the the NBA and everybody's making because he's the guy that, that really expanded the league and has made it as popular as it's ever have so uh, yeah he's he was a, a fantastic commissioner. Coming up he's been a staple in the lineup for the Lopes we catch up with junior forward Alessandro Laver. Crave the night or savor the day. Here we give you all a place to play. Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Across the painted desert, to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford Country, where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford Country, built on serving you. Sanderson Ford, satisfaction in everything. The Dan Marley Show on Fox Sports Arizona is presented by Talking Stick Resort. Play in style. And also brought to you by Cox Business. It's time for the Talking Stick Resort Play of the Week. Play in style. Lopes have it now. A three on two. Pass across to Laver. Ollie running the floor. Slams it home on the pass by Isaiah Brown. Oh, look at the big Italian sprinting down there like an Italian greyhound. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show, presented by Talking Stick Resort. Barry Butel alongside Alessandro Laver from the GC Lopes men's basketball team. And here we are into uh, 2020. A little bit of a break during the, uh, the holidays. And uh, you elected to head up to, to the Rocky Mountains, to uh, Denver, Colorado. What, what was it like? It was beautiful. I thought it was going to be cold. Thankfully, it was like a 60, 65 degrees nice. every time. And went to watch an NFL game, Broncos against the Lions. I went Ooh. to watch um, Christmas Day, the Denver Nuggets playing. Wow, it was like a sports a sports holiday. Yeah. Nice little break, I guess, from basketball, kind of re-energize and then get back to, to uh, the hardwood and, and yes. conference play. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about, it was pretty hectic non-conference schedule, 
roster was kind of up, up in the air. How are you feeling now with one conference game under your belt? We, I guess the Vikings feel we didn't play for like a couple of weeks, so it was, I think, a little harder to get back and just start playing. We practiced with nine players for a week because people were either injured or sick. Mm -hmm. So it was a little hard to practice, but I feel like that, that's the team that we have, so that's the team we gotta compete with. And I think we just gotta keep playing together and we're gonna figure it out. You got into some early foul trouble at Bakersfield, but the team responded and it was tied at 28. Felt pretty good going in at half. How did you feel when you came back out for the second half and maybe how, what, ha what happened there in the last 12 minutes of play? I mean, we were there the whole game. We we struggled. I think the momentum went from us. We were up by 11. We lost. We, they, they hit a three in the corner, mm -hmm. and we lost a ball on offense. And they hit another three, so the momentum switched from us to the to them. And we, I think we never caught them after that. With with the players you know that you have here and the and the rotation that you have, is that a is that a little bit of, of a uh, comfort, you know, going in now to conference play that, hey, th these are the guys, these are the guys in this room that we're going to basically, you know, proverbial war with. I mean, we that's the thing that we have right now. We're right. 10 players, so that's who we got to play with. And what about how opposing teams attack you? Obviously, you got into that double two team. foul trouble. Yeah. yeah, the double teams. I mean, the, the you're going to face that every game. I mean, how do, how do you personally, you know, try to try to work through that? Just gotta, every time I catch the ball in the post, try and make a pass for somebody as soon as the double team comes or just trying to catch the ball and go fast before the double team even has a chance to come. I just gotta try to find a way to get my shots up and try to score and help the team defensively and defensively. Alessandro Laver, our guest, will be right back. Up next, it's the man who captured the video that went viral on social media. Lopes insider Paul Coro joins the show. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. This waste management Phoenix Open will finally be his. No sweeteners, all smiles. Bubbly, sparkling water. Crack a smile. Hi, I'm Dave Kishal, redshirt junior, outside hitter from Glendale, Arizona. Three things I like to do from my hometown is I like to go to Camelback. I'm a big outdoors person. It is a tough hike, but once you get up there, the view's amazing. Second thing, another outdoor place, the Grand Canyon. Make a quick day trip up there. The view's incredible. If you want to see a big hole in the ground, I, I recommend it. Tempe Beach is a cool place to go at night. You can walk around, skateboard. There's cool lights on the bridges. It's a cool place to go. Men's volleyball is gearing up for the season. After their trip to Hawaii to start their 2020 lineup, they return home against Park on the 17th. 
followed by a matchup with UC San Diego on Saturday the 18th. A reminder, all home games can be streamed on GCULopes.com. For a preview of what's to come this season, here's head coach Matt Worley. I think the program as a whole, I'm super proud of where the guys are and the culture that we bring and the character that we bring to the table. And I think that's gonna attribute to some wins this year as well. I know that our record doesn't show it, but we were extremely competitive throughout the entire year with probably the toughest schedule we've ever faced. I knew that we were gonna be able to compete and I knew there were gonna be some matches that were gonna go our direction, but getting those young guys experience on the court, we lost two guys last year, a starting middle and a starting outside, but I think the depth in each position this year will be stronger based on the experience that we gained last year. You know, having you know Christian Janke and Cole Udall back as two uh, freshman all MPSF guys, that's, that's a great thing for us. That's obviously something we've never done as a program. And then, you know, Camden Gianni, who missed last season, you know, with some medical conditions, he's back and stronger than ever. And, you know, he's going to be a guy on the court that's really going to surprise some people as a freshman this year. It's going to make everyone better. Camden is extremely special with what he can do offensively from the back row and the front row from the service line. It's going to level our distribution across the nets. Our middles are going to be extremely offensive this year. I think David Kieschel coming back, he didn't have a ton of reps through the fall just with some shoulder issues, but he's got a big year of experience under his belt from last year as our starting opposite. And he's only going to be stronger this year, so I think that we're going to really kind of surprise some people. Kieschel for the kill! We have three setters. All three setters are very different. I think there's going to be some interchanging parts this year in that setting position, which is great because it's going to give teams a different look with our distribution numbers, but we're definitely preaching, pushing our tempo as fast as we can go. The most improved player would be Kyle Thompson. He's a guy last year that was just kind of lost, lost in the mix. Offensively, he'd have these spectacular, you know, highlight reel moments, uh, but then blocking wise, it would be you know, like, hey Kyle, like, what are you thinking? And now Kyle is really taking a huge step forward, really is having a great understanding for the game. He's one of our better blockers in system and out of system now, which is pretty special, I think, for a sophomore. We're gonna go in and try to win every match. You know, that's, uh, that's the expectation that we preach. It's losing is not acceptable. We're gonna put our best foot forward and give every team our best effort. So you're gonna see us diving around playing gritty volleyball. Our youth is gonna be exciting to watch, but there also might be some laughable moments and that's okay, we'll laugh at them and move on. The Antelope Gym is special and this is definitely a place that we wanna keep exploding to the, the hotbed of Arizona volleyball and have the best environment out there. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show presented by Talking Stick Resort. Barry Butel alongside Lopes Insider Paul Coro. And before we get to basketball, Paul, I want to get to uh, another sport here on campus. Men's volleyball getting underway January 9th. A grueling trip to Honolulu for the Rainbow <laughs> Invitational out there. That's, that's always a nice trip to go to Honolulu to kick off a season. Yeah, Coach Matt Worley knows how to put together a schedule, right? But they have a heavy schedule. They got nine top 15 teams on their schedule. And because they've done so well with drawing people, they were number five in the nation in attendance. They're going to play six of their games in GCU Arena this year, too. Nice, nice. Coming off a season that I'm sure Matt you know, probably wants to build upon, coming off a disappointing three-set match uh, loss to USC in, in postseason play. What type of team does he have uh, on the uh, court this year? Yeah, got pretty much everybody back. A really young team last year with a huge freshman class, and they were still top 15 in the nation at that point when they lost to USC. So all those guys coming back, plus Camden Gianni, who had to sit out the year after the health scare, uh, he's looked like a star in practice so far. What about uh, as we transition to a new coach on campus, women's soccer, and Chris Sissel joins the uh, joins the uh, staff from Kansas City. Yeah, they get a proven winner from Kansas City. He's uh, won coach of the year in the WAC twice, regular season titles three times, including 2017 and 18, and just a high character person that the entire uh, GC administration raved about when they interviewed him. As we transition back to, to men's basketball now, in the past week, you elected to run some video of a practice with, with Dan Marley on the court. It got a few views, I think, on, on social, right? Uh, what was the last count? About 200,000 plus views and a ton of comments on Twitter. He still got it. Shout out to Rex Chapman for the retweet. That really got the, the whole basketball <laughs> helps, world right? going. Too bad there wasn't a block or a charge in there. Yeah, I think uh, everybody doesn't realize uh, the following he has internationally. Yeah. Like, honestly, internationally. That thing blew up, and it's because everybody loves to see uh, the old Thunder uh, 9 do it. And uh, he still he never loses the stroke. He, he might not be able to go side to side or in the lane very much, but he knows his spots out there. And they were, it was funny. They were telling about, you hear at one point, uh, Coach, uh, yelling out, make him put it on the floor. <laughs> because Mikey Dixon was laying off a little bit and he just was slinging it from outside. 
the uh, trash talk, I'm sure, was also uh, uh, something you probably had to edit out a little bit, but I'm sure there was plenty of that as well with Dan. Including the misses, but uh, Coach Marley argued that there wasn't many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of misses, obviously, uh, they weren't too many at, at Bakersfield in the, in the uh, conference opener, but down the stretch there, they just couldn't, couldn't make a back basket, and they couldn't stop one defensively. Yeah, it's unfortunate because probably playing some of their best basketball for the start of that second half to open up a 12-point lead defensively. They were great that game, holding the 36% shooting. And Javon Blackshear Jr. had such a great second half, 12 points, and just that last two and a half minutes got away from him on both sides of the ball and let that one get away. It was so close, too. You know, a couple, a free throw or a layup here, and it changes the outcome. Definitely going to be an interesting conference schedule coming up for the Lopes. Thank you. Coming up, it's a Christmas gift that will capture your heart. Plus, our Ask a Lope as Dan answers another question from a fan. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are going to come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security and most importantly that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. The top tissue paper off. Oh my goodness. Basketball. Basketball. What does it say? You are going to see what? the. You're going the, to get to see the. Grand Canyon University men's basketball, basketball. team. Mm -hmm. You get go with. You get to go. You get to go with ones and only Alex and Jake. <laughs> go, Lopes. A welcoming Christmas gift over the break makes the rounds in the Twitterverse. GCU Hoops fan Zach will be in attendance at the next home game for the Lopes. With that, we take a look ahead to the upcoming schedule brought to you by Cox Business. The men's hoops team continues WAC conference play as they host California Baptist on January 11th at GCU Arena. Then after another early conference road tilt, the Lopes return home on January 23rd to take on Seattle University. All home games can be seen on Fox 10 Extra or stream live at gculopes.com. Hey coach, what do you try and teach your players aside from basketball? Uh, well, thanks, Ann. I think that's a great question. Um, what I try to tell our guys all the time is that uh, to be successful uh, on the floor, uh, it translates off the floor. You just can't expect to be uh, a great basketball player and not take the rest of your life uh, uh, with that kind of energy and that kind of commitment and enthusiasm. So going to class, showing up early, doing your homework, turning everything in, how you treat people, everything's got to be at an excellent level. Um, you just can't expect to be one kind of a player and then not take care of your other stuff off the floor. So I tell our guys that you got to be excellent all the time. Uh, that means getting to class early, uh, doing your homework, uh, trying to be the best person you can be. Uh, and living that kind of life translates for our guys onto the floor. It's just not about being a basketball player. you got to be excellent and try to do everything right uh, off the floor as well. Who instilled that in you? I mean, um in your uh, youth was it Jerry Colangelo? Was no, it I think I've always I, I came from a hardworking Midwestern family. My dad was a single chair barber. Got up at six in the morning, came home at seven at night. So I saw how much he worked, and my mom the same thing. So I uh, just really believed in hard work at whatever you do. I always say moderation is for cowards. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I really do believe that anything I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a hundred percent. Uh, whether it's opening a restaurant or working or doing whatever, I'm gonna put all my heart and soul into it, and I'm gonna try to be the, the best I can be. Up next, as we wrap the show, we honor the decade's top scorer, and we take a look ahead to Saturday's matchup with the Lancers.
Feel the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. LopesTickets.com. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, MLS number 410376. Waking up with peace of mind. Just one of the little perks you get with the SRP Power app. Use it to make conscious decisions on the energy you use every day. No guessing. Everything you need to know. Download the SRP Power app now. SRP. Delivering water and power. Before Jack wore a green jacket, he held an amateur trophy. Talking Stick Resort presents the Amateur Golf Championship, a luxurious stay and play event, plus a chance to win up to $7,000 in prizes, an eight day Hawaiian vacation, and a $7,000 prize pool blackjack tournament. The Talking Stick Resort Amateur Golf Championship at Talking Stick Golf Club, January 24th through 26th. Men and women sign up at talkingstickresort.com. Twenty twenty is off and running, and with that, we close out a decade's worth of WAC basketball. Congratulations to our very own Josh Braun, who finished as the WAC's top scorer of the decade. What's up, Lope Nation? Appreciate you guys reaching out. It was an honor to be named leading scorer of the decade for the WAC. Um, you know, I really enjoyed. I was thankful for my time at GCU. I had a good four years there. Once the Lope, always the Lope. Miss you all, and Lope's up. There you saw it, former GCU Lope Josh Braun. For the past decade, well, the wax top scorer for Josh. He was phenomenal for the last, uh, well. Well, yeah, Josh was, you know, everybody knows what Josh did for this program. This yeah. is a kid that came in that was highly recruited, had some major knee problems, some injuries, and we were lucky to get him. And we talked about, we call him Mr. GCU. Not only, and it's just like that, uh, when we talked about our players and, and how they have to be not only on the floor, but off the floor, Josh, uh, was that guy. Uh, he was just great in the community, great on campus, great in class, great in practice, uh, played his butt off every day, uh, really cared about winning. So we were lucky to have him. Uh, he came in as a freshman, uh, red-shirted, uh, didn't start him, show you how, much, how brilliant I was. I didn't start him for a while, hardly played him for like the six or seven games. And then uh, we had an injury, he came in and kind of lit it up. I think it was at Central Michigan, his first game, and the rest was history. So. Uh, just perseverance as a guy who's went through a lot of energies and, and, and just battled through them and is going to be uh, one of the best all-time lopes ever. Baptist, Milan Aqua, he's got some support now. Yeah, I mean, they were good last year. They'll be good again this year. This is a young program. It's a lot like we were when we uh, were divisioning or when we were transferring in from our Division II to Division I. So uh, they'll be a good test for us. He's a really good player. We, had to, we did a really good job with him last year, double teaming a lot, and he, didn't, he wasn't very successful. So I'm sure he's got that in the back of his mind. But... Uh, this is going to be a huge game for us. Obviously, we need to win. All right, Coach, good luck. All right, thank you. All right, Head Coach Dan Marley, thanks so much for tuning into the Dan Marley Show.